Hello, and welcome to a new series. This is a bonus tour. At the moment, this type of content will be available every one or two days. I love video games as well, so I wanted to talk about something which is related to them while touring. In this episode, we'll be discussing Zelda topics about realism versus cartoony art styles, a Nintendo Labo ideas, along with Dark Souls on the Switch and things which they should add into it, but probably won't. Plus, for the final topic, I will be discussing why I love Splatoon 2. Normally with my drawings, by the way, I drew them in 20 minutes or less, but because this is an entire new series, I wanted to do something different with this one, which, with this picture I, of Link, I took around an hour to stop. I could have added more to it, but the file had crashed in the halfway through. I would hope I'd be able to get this sort of level in 20 minutes by improving with my other series eventually. I definitely feel like I have gotten faster since doing this though, as normally it would take a lot longer to draw something like this. Okay, now let's get on with the topics. The first one up is Zelda. Now I love the Zelda series. My favourite games in the franchise are Wind Waker, Breath of the Wild, A Link to the Past, Majora's Mask and Minish Cap. I would say I like the 3D ones better because I listed more 3D ones on there than 2D ones. But something which always annoys me is in, in the Zelda community is the fact that people have this idea that some games are cartoony and some are more realistic. The truth about this topic though is no game is actually realistic in the Zelda franchise. The only reason people call these games realistic like Twilight Princess is because of the more darker tone to the world. However, just because it ha has a darker tone, it doesn't give it a realistic style. The characters' models are anything but realistic. Every single Zelda game has more of an anime style that is approached more than a, an approach to realism. The ma major example is the face and body shapes in Twilight Princess. They are very stylistic with the way they depict characters' muscles and bodies. My point is, when you put a character model from Zelda next to a game like FIFA, which is going for realism because they are trying to represent real-life people, there is a clear overall difference in the design, and it's obvious to tell that Zelda isn't going for a realistic approach. But that's okay, because the cartoony art style of each game always represents the characters well, giving them life with each design choice the Zelda team uses. I'm always glad that every Zelda game keeps a cartoony style to it, but changes it up so much that it, it, it is vastly different from the previous game. It gives a new feeling to the world and sets a tone to the story they are creating for that game. Now, let's, let's move on to topic 2. I like the idea for Labo, but I would also come up with my own ideas for the IR camera games as well. Due to this, and you could have a lot of cool ideas coming out of it. The one I wanted the most to be made is the virtual paintball, or more or less, in this case, laser tag, but with the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons anywhere you want, at any time, with anyone. This idea can be so cool if developed correctly, you would put the Switch into the gun-shaped labo along with the Joy-Cons to aim, etc., then, the IR camera would pick up opponents by checking it. They have Joy-Cons of their own connected to the Wi-Fi. When, when you fire at them, you hit them on not, and the feedback will transfer to the switch showing their life bar drop down. You could probably have something in the area you do, which you have to go back to to act as a spawn point. The game would mainly be a 5 versus 5 team sort of deathmatch, and once all the players have been knocked out a certain number of times, or I guess a timer would run out, the game would stop, and by whichever team has the most defeats would be the losing team. You you could also even play IR camera an IR camera version of Capture the Flag I guess in real life, too. 
it might be complicated to pull off because if you get a guy knocked out, he might not give up the flag. Although I'm guessing you could put in a penalty system in the game if they don't give it up, which resorts to them being kicked out the match, I guess. Okay, so that's enough about that. Now let's move on to the third topic, Dark Souls. It is one of my fav many favourite games, and it's great to see the game on the Nintendo Switch. One thing I want on it, though, which I don't think will happen, is local play. It, or a Street Pass-like mode. If you're playing on the go, imagine if you could randomly connect to people who were near you playing the game, or just connect via Wi-Fi with your friends as well in real life. It would be really great to have this game like this where you wouldn't need internet to play online as well. The best thing about it is not having to worry about the servers getting shut down like Demon Souls right now, in the future, so it would be safer to say that you'd always be able to play PvP with anyone 20 years later if you wanted to. Another thing I'd like to add is motion controls. Skyrim had it, added it, so I guess Dark Souls c could add it as well. It, it would be a fun side thing to make for the game, for anyone who wished to use it. And I guess it wouldn't be that hard to implement considering the slow tactical nature of the combat in the game. Finally, I'd like to talk about Splatoon 2. I love this series. Normally I don't really like shooters, but with this game it's very fun to pick up and play. I've gotten a lot better at aiming now with the motion controls and really believe every shooter needs this sort of setup. If your game doesn't have motion controlled aiming, I might not play it as much as I have with Splatoon 2 because it makes it feel so good. I love how unique the mechanics of the game are. The teams which control the most inked spaces will be able to maneuver around the map a lot faster, which always means you should be trying to stop your opponents from painting the area before you, before you by splatting them before they splat you. If you do this, your team will obviously have a much better chance on winning the match as they have to wait for the spawn plus to clear a path of ink just to be able to get to you.
Also, please like, share, and subscribe to help improve my content. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.